Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilab. The topic that we would be dealing today is from the analytical techniques. Today we would be talking about spectroscopy. Okay. So why have I started this topic? Because the gate examination is round the corner and uh, this spectroscopy portion is asked in a lot of marks in the gate examinations. So that is why I have started this spectroscopy portion. I believe uh, you would enjoy studying this. So let us first of all in the first lecture in, in today's lecture what I would be dealing with is I would be talking about the basic concepts the introductory portion of the spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? So it is the study of interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter as a function of wavelength or frequency of radiation. So let us understand this. Suppose this is some kind of a matter. Okay, so this is a matter and whenever we are studying the interaction between the electromagnetic radiation. So consider electromagnetic radiation as the light. Okay. So whenever we are studying the interaction between a matter and the electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so this can be done using the concept of spectroscopy. Electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation would be having two things. One would be the wavelength and the other thing would be the frequency. Okay, so electromagnetic radiation would be comprised of two things. One would be radiation and the other one would be frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. Now, whenever it is interacting, whenever this, uh, this is a matter in electromagnetic radiation is interacting with this matter, what will happen? There would be some kind of a change in the, uh, in the, in the, in the wavelength. There, there might be some kind of a change in the wavelength or whatever is the change. We measure that change, we measure that concept, we measure that changes and understand the property of the matter. Okay, By, measure, by measuring the, the, those changes, we understand what is the, uh, the structure or what is about or gain the information about matter by studying those. Uh, this kind of an interaction. Okay, so this is uh, about spectroscopy. This is the concept of spectroscopy. What can be matter? What do you what do you understand by matter over here? So matter can be anything like atoms. It can be like molecules. It can be anything like ions. So all of these things they would interact with electromagnetic radiation in some way or the other, and there would be an alteration in the uh, wavelength frequency of the radiation which we have to study okay so now this spectroscopy can be of basically three types absorption spectroscopy emission spectroscopy and scattering spectroscopy okay these are the three types of spectroscopy however we would understand these three spectroscopy in future lectures but today I just want to briefly introduce this spectroscopy topic to you. Okay, so this absorption, emission or scattering spectroscopy, whatever information that you are gaining from this spectroscopy would be utilized in quantitative and qualitative studies. Okay, so whenever, whenever you are understanding, whenever you are uh, looking at the radiations that are absorbed or emitted whenever you are understanding the radiations that are absorbed or emitted by an atom or a molecule what kind of radiation it is absorbing what kind of radiation it is emitting that radiation would that information would give you the information about the identity of the atom or the molecule with that you can identify that this would be because it is doing such and such things, because it is changing the parameters to such and such extent, because such and such thing is happening. Therefore, we can be sure that the matter that we are looking at should be this. Okay, so this is about the qualitative spectroscopy. Now, let us understand because it is telling us right because it is telling us about the quality. Now, let us talk about the quantitative spectroscopy. What does quantitative spectroscopy tell us? It would tell us the amount of the matter that is present. 
okay so the total amount of radiation that is being emitted that is being absorbed i mean to say uh, things like this whenever you are taking into consideration a holistic approach you are you are taking a holistic approach you are understanding the total amount of radiation that was absorbed or emitted it would give you the idea about the total concentration of the matter that was present so this comes under quantitative spectroscopy okay so i believe this uh, would have given you a clear cut understanding about what spectroscopy actually is okay so now let us move our attention towards the electromagnetic radiation what is electromagnetic radiation now it is a form of energy most simplistically we can understand this electromagnetic radiation as a form of energy okay now any energy might or this energy has a characteristic feature that it would be having two components okay two components are present in this energy one component is the electric field the other component is the magnetic field now now you would be able to understand that why we are calling it as electromagnetic radiation okay because it is having a electric component also and it is having a magnetic component also that is why it is called as electromagnetic radiation now let us understand that how does this electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation progress okay suppose the electromagnetic radiation is progressing in this particular direction okay now if this is the direction of propagation okay if this is the direction of propagation let us understand this is the direction suppose this is the direction of propagation okay so one wave or let us say the electrical wave and the magnetic wave would be at 90 degrees phase to each other okay so look at this this is the direction of propagation suppose this is the direction of propagation in this particular direction i am showing you the this black pen is showing you the direction of the electric field or electric uh, component and this would be the direction of the magnetic component okay so this is the direction on the z axis is the magnetic uh, uh, component y axis is showing you the electrical component and this is the direction of propagation okay so this is a 3d diagram you can see that this actually is perpendicular okay so this is 90 degree angle over here this is this electrical component and magnetic components are perpendicular to each other this is what i wanted to show you in this particular diagram other important thing that i want you to focus on over here is that the distance between two consecutive troughs or crests is called as wavelength okay so over here uh, the the wave is going downwards and the distance between two consecutive structures like this crests or troughs would give you wavelength okay it's not essential that you can take the distance between only these two you can take the distance between these two also and it would give you the wavelength so the highest displacement from the mean position gives you the value of amplitude okay it would give you the value of amplitude and uh, this is the concept electric field magnetic field amplitude wavelength now a very very important point that i would like to tell you is the understanding of the uh, spectra of electromagnetic radiations so electromagnetic radiations comprises of a huge spectra huge huge spectra now if you look closely then we are talking about over here that the wavelength 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 1 10 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 7 10 to the power 9 so this is actually the wavelength of the uh i mean to say the spectra this is this is the actually the spectra of electromagnetic radiations and it this spectra comprises of different types of rays La, uh, this uh, gamma rays x rays uv rays visible rays infrared rays microwave and radio wave okay so this is 
on the lower end if you see th this this is often asked in different life science examinations that you are increasing actually the what what is the what are these parameters this is often asked so when you are talking about wave number what is wave number it is actually inverse of the wavelength okay and i have given you that this is actually the wavelength this in this direction we are giving you wavelength okay so you can see over here the wavelength is increasing okay so first is in, in in the first case what you can see is that since the wavelength is increasing in this particular direction wave number would be decreasing because wave number is inverse of wavelength okay next frequency would be again decreasing in this particular direction why why is that so because you might be knowing that frequency or nu frequency is represented by nu is equals to c by lambda over here lambda is being uh, lambda is the wavelength okay so that then you can see that this frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other that is why i have written that this x ray uh, uh, this gamma ray everything would be having lesser frequency and it would be moving towards uh, this would be having a higher frequency and if we move towards the right then we are having this lower frequency similarly this would be having 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 1 these types of rays these types of waves radiations would be having a higher energy and if you move towards right you are going towards the lower energy now how is, is this related or how is this wavelength or frequency related with energy let us understand this so frequency i told you nu is equals to c by lambda and e energy is equals to h nu okay so nu is again equal to i said that nu can be given as c by lambda so over here you can understand that the relationship between energy and lambda is inverse that means if the lambda or the wavelength decreases the energy would increase that is so we said over here in this direction you can see that the uh, wavelength is increasing therefore definitely the energy would be decreasing that is why i have written the lower energy in this direction and higher energy in this direction okay so shorter lambda that is a uh, shorter wavelength you can see over here 10 to the power minus 3 is lesser in wavelength and if we move towards right hand side the wavelength is increasing so you have to understand these parameters wave number you have to understand you have to understand the uh, the wavelength you have to understand the frequency and you have to understand the energy what is the relation and in, in which direction energy increases which in which direction it decreases in which direction the wavelength increases or decreases and in which direction wave number increases or decreases you should be understanding this particular thing because it is helpful in fluorescence uh, also when we understand the fluorescence spectroscopy it would be helpful in that also okay so this we have understood you can see over here this is the visible region so this comprises a very short portion of the entire this electromagnetic spectrum our visible region comprises only a small portion 400 to 700 nanometer is only the this this spectrum that comprises your visible region that comprises your web gear that comprises your the components of the the, the colors or the components that you can see by your naked eye okay so this uh, Again, radiation is also uh, expressed in terms of wave number. I have uh, written about wave number over here because wave number is inversely proportional to lambda or in other words, you can see that this is the wave number e and bar is written. This is the wave number. It is equals to one by lambda and the unit of this wave number is just inverse to the unit of wavelength the unit of wavelength was centimeter unit of wave number becomes centimeter inverse so you have you should be remembering about this also and uh, this was about wave number why why do you represent uh, this why do you use wave number instead let us understand this because scientists want that they should be having some parameter in which would be which should be 
increasing with the energy or it should be in collinear with the energy that means that if the energy is increasing the wave number or any parameter should also increase it should not be uh, the other way around so that is why the wave number was came into being because wave number is inversely proportional to lambda it's just like the energy right energy is also inversely proportional to lambda as you saw over here over here also this wave number is inversely proportional to lambda that is why this wave number what came into being so i believe this would have been a useful concept for you for spectroscopy i would be taking more lectures on spectroscopy before the gate exam so as to clear the concepts as much as i can okay so if you like the lecture please uh, push the like button and subscribe to my channel another important announcement that the uh, the january batch of the bioinformatics course the two courses introduction to bioinformatics and computer aided drug designing would be continuing in january as well so if you want you can enroll in these course and understand bioinformatics in a much easy way thank you so much have a good day